Peace. Guido here. To my Afro-cultivators, I have a question for you. So I hope that y'all are ready, fam. Why are West Afro descendants so interested in Egypt and not West Africa? Egyptology's modern history begins with the invasion of Egypt by Napoleon Bonaparte in the late 18th century. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799. The study of many aspects of ancient Egypt became more scientifically oriented with the publication of Memoir sur l'Egypte in 1800 and the more comprehensive Description de l'Egypte between 1809 and 1829. These recorded Egyptian flora, fauna, and history, making numerous ancient Egyptian source materials available to Europeans for the first time. Now let me interject. What were most African Americans doing in the early 19th century in the United States? Better yet, how do you think Africans in the Western Hemisphere would have came across this type of influence? Another great question. Why are West Afro descendants so interested in the ancient Near East and not West Africa? Between 1761 and 1767, Karsten, however you pronounce his name, a Danish mathematician made copies of cuneiform inscriptions at Persepolis in Persia as well as sketches and drawings of Nineveh and was shortly followed by André Michaud, a French botanist and explorer who sold the French Bibliothèque Nationale de Paris in an in, in inscribed boundary stone found near Baghdad. The first known archaeological excavation in Mesopotamia was led by Abbe Bochamp, Papal Vicar General at Baghdad, excavating the sculpture now generally known as the Lion of Babylon. How would you say we got so interested in the Middle East now? Have you seen any movies about Niger Valley civilization? Why was the Niger Valley civilization not considered one of the cradles of civilization like Egypt? What about ancient Walata civilization in present day Mauritania? The other day on a Facebook post I made, one brother told me that he washes his beard with raw African black soap. I was quite impressed. Raw African soap is a great choice for a coarse beard, but especially for those patchy beards so it can dry out and remove the oil that's clogged into the pores, blocking beard growth and causing bumps and blackheads instead. But note that I said that raw African soap dries out the skin. You still need to moisturize and stimulate the beard as well as the skin beneath it. Otherwise, the beard will end up feeling crinkly, thin, and brittle. So just to keep the beard lively and stimulated after using raw African soap, a good unrefined shea butter based beer bomb is a good way to go. Using unrefined shea butter based bombs are very good for beer growth, moisturizer, and a clean and full appearance, but for some it may be the wrong step to help their beard. But if your beer has already started to get thick, shea butter won't get to the area that needs nourishment the most. So I developed an agricultural concept for the brothers that are focused on the external beard and an exclusive oil for the brothers that are focused on the skin beneath. There was a hundred black Wall Streets in the state of Oklahoma, but we only talk about the one in Tulsa because of the massacre. Follow us to the last 13. It's in the link tree link in the description. Also in the link tree link in the description, you can become an Afrocultivator by going to the last button that you see highlighted and becoming one. Like, share, subscribe, tell the fam about Afroculture concepts. Peace.